This is Kahari Hicks here with Row 9 Studios, Coaches and Cars. Episode here with legendary football coach Ted Ginn Sr. What's going on, man? What's happening? Nothing. Um, I appreciate you doing this with us. Um, you're one of the most accomplished coaches in Ohio high school history. When you took over at Glenville, I mean, you've got guys in the league. You've changed lives. You've got a school in your name. When you first took over, could you imagine all this happening? Uh, maybe not at the level that it's happened, but... You know, I already knew that, you know, it was going to be different, you know, uh, because my purpose was different. You know, I didn't really care about winning games and stuff like that, but just give me an opportunity to, to be in a position to help children, you know, try to, like you said, save their lives and give them opportunity to be great individuals and great citizens. documentary called Winning Lives. To describe that, how does Ginn Academy and Glenville football under the leadership of Ted Ginn, what, what do you define as winning lives? Because, you know, a lot of people, you know, you win that game, you know, it's a victory. But, you know, for you, I know it's always been so much deeper. What does winning lives mean to you? Well, it really didn't mean football. You know, it, it just meant that it gave me opportunity once I say, once again, I say it gave me opportunity to to have an entity that I can really win the, the children, you know, as far as raising them and, and being that, you know, educational-wise, giving them an opportunity to, to have the proper understanding about how to go to school, how to, how to survive in the world. And I just had a football team that, and a track team that, you know, to do that. But winning their life is being able to get those core values and do the things that, that that we all was raised up under years ago. And I just used the sports and now I have a school to try to do that. So, you know, I just think that there's a lot of things missing, you know, in education and just raising children. Um, you know, and I always talk about the table, you know, um, the football, the school, the track it sets a table that we can engage and give them the core values of life and we can have better people and better citizens and stuff like that. What would be the number one core value that you would place on that table? I know you do so much, but if you could just, if you had to have a starting point, where would it be? What would be the core value that you would start with? Love. Why? Because, you know, kids need to be loved. People need to be loved. And, and you know, along with care. Uh, kids don't really care about what you know. Uh, all they care about how much you care and how much you love them. And, and you you know, you every kid is different. And you can't just have a cooker-cutter type situation to try to help people and help children. And they, so the first value has to be love. You know, um, that's this, you know, and then you got to have a spiritual base. And, and I think maybe, that's missing from a lot of these kids now. That's the, that's the next one that maybe should be the first one, you know, to give them that spiritual base to, to understand that their strength and their abilities and this living don't rely on them. You know, it's a higher power. And we've taken that away from them schools and the, the programs, you know, but not me. 
How many kids have you put into school? A rough, a, yeah, a rough oh, estimate. Really, you know, it's been over three hundred. Got God, to be in geez. twenty something years. Three hundred kids. I, you know, I think I think that just that had to be said because people just don't know. Um, you know, you know, I taught at Patrick Henry. A lot of my students end up going to you. Right. Talk about how important that is to help our kids get access to a college education. Well, you know, I always think that, um, and I always say this, that when when you graduate kids, you win it. But when you, when you get them to college or into the workforce or to armed service and get them to college, you dominate. So it's the most important one of the most important situations to be in when you go to college because, you know, the world is based, a lot of the jobs and different things in the world are based on college education, you know. Uh, but, it, you know, that's a huge accomplishment, you know. So. I just, you know, I just, when I look at that, I just think about, you know, I, I know it's so interesting for you because, you know, there's one guy, you know him real well. I taught him, uh, Tor Toriel, um, you know, left, went to Ball State, got that degree, yeah. you know, and I, I was so happy because just unfortunately around a lot of, a lot of the kids is so much negativity. No and when I saw him come back and him and Travis had that degree, and I didn't teach Travis, but you know, I was like in tears because so many times people are always telling these kids what the, what, what they can't be. Yeah, that people are telling these kids what they can't be, what they can't do, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you've got so many of those of those stories um and and it's and it's so it's, it's so beneficial for you to do these things for these young men because you know i want i want to touch on this because you said this is one, one of my one of your favorite my favorite i call them ginisms <laughs> walking straight in a crooked world oh yeah trying to go straight in a crooked world tough what why why, why is it so why is it so tough for for your players and young people in general to walk straight in a crooked world yeah because the world is so crooked Everybody is about what they're about, and nobody's really focusing on the kids. And then everybody do what it takes to benefit themselves and not to benefit kids. So you're trying to teach kids to be straight, but then they see their different things. You know what I'm saying? So it's hard for them to go straight in the crooked world, just like it is for us as adults. But we know how to handle it a little better because we're we're more mature and have more experience. But you get kids, young kids that try to go straight in things that they see because social media is really live. Social media is really what's raising our children. And they are they, they exposed to all that stuff. You know, so you, you know, it's tough. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's, that's some of the reason why I say that, you know. And you got to convince the kid. And you, you almost got to be a, a behavior analyst and a behavior expert <laughs> <laughs> See, that, that's another that's another ginism uh, be had i uh, listen i literally talk about that in class right. I, I talked with some of my fellow educators i said about it. i said coach gin you know coach gin i said oh my god what's he like i said he's everything is advertised but you talk about being a behavior analyst how does that <laughs> it's, it's so funny like how does that how, how does that make you a better football coach a better teacher how does that play a role in what you do? Because you 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 know how to analyze the client. You know, a lot of people just don't take that kind of time out uh, to to get to know the, the clients, which is the children. You know, every kid has a different problem. You know, just like I talk about the man with the medicine. You know, I think that's what I have. You know what I'm saying? Because every kid got some type of illness. You know. And you got to you got to assist it, the, the the illness, and then you got to medicate it. So that's why you assist said, the illness and medicate. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's cold. That's cold right you there, man. And, and that's that's just what it is, you know. And that's what people really don't want to do. That you know what I'm saying? Because that requires relationship. That requires touching and feeling and and spending time. You know, we just want to say, you know, do this and do this. And this is why. You won't tell them why, you know, but they, they, they want that, that relationship. So all these different behaviors 
they all over. It's not nothing personal to you. You just got to figure it out, you know. And what happens is as, as educators, you know, we don't want to, and as parents and, and as just leaders, as coaches, you know what I'm saying? We don't want to do these things. You know, I always tell you about um, fishing for catfish in a bluegill pond. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, because you got this big hook on your pole and you want to go and you say, I'm going to catch a big catfish today. You understand? You already got that in your mind and you got a tackle box that you're going fishing with. And you go out there and you never assess the pond. You never assess where you at. And you just keep fishing and, and you're getting a bite. You understand? You're frustrated. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And you're frustrated because of your thinking because you refuse to assess the, the, the fish that's in the water and you're in a bluegill pond fishing for catfish and you get nibbled to death and you frustrate. I want to switch real quick because this this has to be said because I, you know, I was there. I was literally 22 years old. I just want to get your take on this. Back to 1999, Glenville High School is in the state playoffs for the first year. I knew you start smiling on that one. And I'll see, I know you know, there are people in tears. Right. I'll never forget that people were crying. And I just, there was this energy in Lakewood Stadium. And, you know, all you see is Glenville coming out. And there's not a, there's not a seat. And everybody's ready for this show. How did you feel being the first coach to lead the first team from the Senate to the state playoffs? What was the vibe like? What were you saying in the locker room? How were you feeling in that situation? Well, you know, but that was a huge accomplishment, you know. And, and you know, Glimmer football is a mindset. And I just felt like, you know, what a, what a hell of an accomplishment for some kids that really didn't have any hope and people never even looked at them to even be in that situation. You know, that might have been, was that the, 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 that was the second round. I don't talk about the 99 one when uh, highly started at quarterback of the ninth grader. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the, that was the, that was the first one. Yeah, but we, that we, was the second round of the, because we won the first That, that was the shaker one. That, we will get to that one in a second. Oh, my God. That shaker, that, one, that shaker was one of the craziest games well, I've ever seen was, in my life. We're going to get to that one. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get to that one in a second. But, but that was the second round of the playoffs. Okay. And, and you know, so we was already, you know, we, we had confidence out of, the, out of this world because we know that we didn't supposed to be there according to society, according to people's opinion. Uh, being the inner city school, you know, see, and what people fail to realize, Clifford is a, really a community team. Where you, where, they hit, where, where they hit you, on that. Where you're playing cities. You know, you're playing Lakewood City. Right. Tell, you're playing Euclid City, Miller City. We, we're a community team. Tell me, tell me about the Glenville community. Well, you know, we're one of the strongest communities in Cleveland. We a lot of great people have came through this this community. You know, a lot of Superman and everybody, the mayor, all kind of stuff. First mayor and stuff. You people know, don't even know that Superman is is, is yeah. from is from Glenville. So, you know, Steve Harvey, everybody. And, you know, a lot of great people came through Glenville. But we have a mindset that I continue to try to hold. That makes the community. You know, we 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 don't have we we have confidence and leadership in our community. That, that we really believe in. And I come from Glenville High School, even back in the 70s and the 60s when I came through. You know, so all we're doing is continue to try to have that same pride, but you know, we kind of losing it because of the community now is, we're being dormant around, a lot of people moving out, and it's hard to keep that tradition going because, you know, a lot of people are, are leaving out, you know, and all these older people here now. They're building one of the greatest communities in the city of Cleveland, you know. A lot of people don't understand the Louisiana on that chain. You're a southern, you're, you're from the south, right? Oh, no doubt. Tell me, what was that like growing up in the south, in a segregated south as an African-American man? Oh. Because my dad, my dad did a freedom ride, but he didn't grow up in it. You know what I mean? I've, I've heard some things before, but I'd just rather just you just say it. What was it like growing up? 
um, in the South during segregation of being a black man? Yeah, well, I was a, a black man, but a black kid, you know, so I saw a lot of uh, racism. I saw a lot of, I saw segregation because, you know, we I went to the black school and we had the white school. But, you know, back then, you know, I saw, we, we had the, 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 the white malt stand and the black malt stand. You had my, I went to back to the back doors to get my food in the restaurant. We had a restaurant in Franklin called the White Kitchen. <laughs> the that? White Kitchen. And I remember my grandmother worked back there. And when you went to order your food, you had to go pick your food up at the back. Like in the back where you, where the kitchen was, where you go empty the garbage. And that's how you got your food. And everybody your, player, your players can't even understand, no. can't even understand that. A lot of people can't, you know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't understand no. it. I mean, no. I, I listen to my stories. My dad tells me, I just said, man, this is no crazy. We had, the, we had the movie in town. The black folks was upstairs and the white folks was downstairs. Was yeah. the was the clan big in Louisiana oh, when you no were there? Doubt. I stayed right next door to Mr. Benny King. What? Mr. Benny King was the Ku Klux Klan. You and stayed then, next door to a clan? Oh yeah. wow. And, and and so this is these are the things that that I live by that I know. You understand? I don't have to go pick up a book to read that. Right. I lived it. You know what I'm saying? I can remember when when they took our land, you know, every every year. He would be fixing his fence. I asked my grandma, why Mr. Benny King always fixing his fence and moving it over? You understand? And they, they're taking our land. There's nothing you can do about it. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, I lived in that stuff, man. And uh, I can tell you so much about that. Jeez, man. I just, you know, I, I, but I guess that goes back to, in terms of you trying to provide opportunities to educate young men. That's right. And, you know, I, I, I consider you a revolutionary because, you know, when I was first coming up in coaching, there's this whole concept of the Ted Ginn tour, right? Where you just took a busload of kids and started changing lives. No, no doubt. And it was open for everybody, and it was basically started. Why well, you know I used to do it in a band and stuff right. like that, and I was successful. But then when I when I said, "Dad, it's not that's not fair to everybody," else. so I thought about the inner city kids. I said, "Let me get a bus and let me just take kids from every school, so that we all can, uh, you know, be uh, recruited or be exposed to college." You know what that was? You know, everybody didn't want their kid to be with me. Cause they think I'm gonna take the kid with you in the year. You come on, go with me. And people probably didn't want to take then, you up on that. No, and then they didn't want to so go. You know what I'm saying? So don't stop the kid, though. You know what I'm saying? I don't want your kid. I got kids. You know, so all that stuff, man, was stuff that I just, you know, tried to do because education is what you what you exposed to. You know what I'm saying? You know, I could go with you. Like I said, I'm a country boy. So, you know, I can remember when I was in school, your, your grandparents, they probably went to the second or third grade. They said, you go down to that schoolhouse and you do that schoolhouse lesson, but you better learn how to do something. Right. <laughs> you understand? I never understood that. That means that you better learn how to do something for its work. You know? You know, because back in my day, if it was time to pick cotton and, and corn and whatever, they didn't care about no school that day. Right. You know, you're going to have to get this done because this is how we live. I've seen them build a fence with don't get your hammer or a nail. Wow. And then, they, but they, they were sharp with the angles and how to fit it, how to make it, where you couldn't knock it down with a car. You know what I'm saying? So all those is learning how to do something. You know, so they knew geometry and all that kind of stuff, the angles and different things like that by hand. You know what I'm saying? I think, you know, there, there's so, there, I, I don't even know, there's so much I want to ask you um, just because it's just phenomenal what you, what you're doing, what you continue to do. Your son, one of the best high school football players in the state of Ohio history. Mm -hmm. What was that like having a son that was that good? You know, as a father, as a coach, what was that like coaching your son? And he, even now, watching him um, play. You know, playing the Super Bowl, you know, live out his dream. What what what's it, what has that been like for you? 
Well, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm I'm thankful and proud to have a son that that has accomplished that those type of goals. But you know, for me, it's always scary. Why? Because my son had to be the example for right. everybody else. He couldn't. He couldn't make any mistakes. He, never. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know. You know, and you know about how much I coach him, though. I did. I coach him. You know, just a little. I always allow him, somebody else, to coach my son. You know what I'm saying? And I'll get in a little bit here and there, but. He, he was the example for hope for other children. You know what I'm saying? And it scares me sometimes because what if I wasn't here? A lot of the kids that went off to school and college and different things and been productive people, boys and girls, you know what I'm saying? What if I just didn't stay? And I guess that's where I want to touch touch next. Some people know, some people don't know that you, know, you had cancer mm -hmm. and you had pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. And the survival rate on that is... 5%. Right, really, really low. What went through your mind when you got that initial initial diagnosis? And nothing, because I didn't know it. They never told me. I just knew I had some pancreatic stuff. But I really didn't know it, what I actually had because I was so sick. And I was in the hospital like 60 days, two months, you know, and I really didn't know. Did you and think you were going to die? No. It never crossed my mind. <laughs> but, but I know that they told my family I was. I remember the doctor laying on my chest crying. And I'm looking at him like, he, I never wanted this for you. I ain't know what he was talking about. You know, I was cool. <laughs> you, know and, you know, man, that's that's remarkable that you yeah. could handle something like that because, yeah. you know, not, not everybody can handle ha handle yeah. that. What what was what was on your mind while you were away from the school, oh away God. from football, away oh from the, the kids? What 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 was going on? What was going that, on in your head? That was the that was the survival. Is that I knew that I had to get out of there to get back to school, get back to work. You know, what saved my life was my family, my church, and what I do. My school, my kids, my football team. Those, those, because that's what, that's, that's, that's why, that's my life. You know, I, you know, people used to tell me, you know, you need to pray for you. You know, people always say, man, I thought that was selfish. Well, I'm going to pray for myself because I knew why I was there. I knew why I was in, in there. I knew why God put me in the hospital. Why, why with do you, that type of why do you why do you think that was? Because I do, and I tell people this all the time: being a, a parent, being an educator, a head of anything with children, doing that, and your heart not in it, and if you got the wrong people around you, it's a judgment day for it if you're not true. A judgment day of wow. Yeah, but, but, but you, but you, you've you've always been big on that, just right. in terms of just, right. you know, giving the spiritual piece to your to to the kids. What do you what do you think has changed the most about the children since you started coaching, and when you first got into you know got into coaching? What do you think has been the biggest change? Well, it's the, it's, it's the accountability um, of not just kids, but the people that's leading the kids. Nobody wants to put in the work that it takes to help children. You right. understand? See, when you came along, you had your daddy, your mm -hmm. mama, yeah. you had everybody at the table. You know, ain't, no, ain't, ain't, ain't nobody taking, ain't nobody sitting at the table no more. Okay. You the table. See, I, yeah, you okay. and that, that's the problem. When, yes, when you are the table, there's You're no the one pouring into you. And nobody's pouring in you. Nobody wants to do that. You know, so the problem today is the fact that it requires more of you as a parent, as a leader, as an educator, and people not willing to do that. And they keep trying these same old cooker cutter type situations. It's not gonna get you nowhere. Get you fried. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm just telling you how it is. Get man. you fried. Don't get you fried, man. You know. Okay, so so you talk about, you know, your mission. On the field, off the field. 
the two biggest accomplishments of Ted Ginn Sr. Off the field and on the field. Because I know, I, I know a lot of coaches define themselves on the field. You had a phenomenal win-loss record. Let's start with off the field. What's the biggest accomplishment you've had off the, off the field? Man, that's a tough question for me. I know. I ask good questions. Yeah. You, <laughs> you want me to dig deep? The biggest accomplishment off the field. I'm, well, I'm finna blow your skull. Go blow my skull. I'm ready. Because you, you always got something the big, good. The biggest accomplishment off the field is to be able to sit here and talk to you now. To what? get back on the field. Because I was on death row. Because I know okay. since then... I've saved a lot of kids' lives that probably would have never been saved. So that's the biggest accomplishment off the field for me. You understand? Because I can't think of anything else that's more pleasing than being alive. You understand what I'm saying? Man, just, to do God's work. So I'm in the. It's a, it's a ministry I, for you. Yeah, I know. I, I'm in. I'm in the the mafia of <laughs> of spirituality the mafia of, I, that's, I a, that's a new one i can't get out the mafia of spirituality he, he gonna kill me you know what i'm saying <laughs> yes and so that that to me might be the biggest accomplishment off the field what about on the field oh man you know it, it depends on what you're talking about it depends on if you're talking about winning a game Whatever, whatever, oh, what, what, whatever, whatever you feel. I think the biggest accomplishment on the field is to be able, to, once again, to be able to get on the field and be able to engage with children and be that person that can change their lives and and help them and expose them and just to be able to God give me enough strength to 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 still do the work that He set me out to do. So, I, I I'm I'm gonna throw one out there. Okay. That shaker game. I'll never forget. I'm 24 years old, watching in the stands. They had to bring in extra stands for that game. No and no one expected y'all to win that game. No. Nobody. No. The Pierre Woods is an absolute animal. I mean, he's in the backfield. I mean, he's just doing everything. And then you guys win the game. I'll never forget Leonard Jackson crying as the fans storm the field. Mm -hmm. And you guys won that football game. And there are so many people... Shaker was number one in the state. <laughs> they, they were, oh, they were loaded that year. And, right. and what, what's going through your mind when their fans are, are rushing the field? Because a lot of people don't get a lot in high school football. You don't see a field rush very often. Right. You've had what? You had. I've seen like three in twenty some years of coaching. You had one. What, what's going through your mind as 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 the fans are rushing on the field? And like you said, your group of kids that that no one believed in. Are, are moving on in the playoffs right i mean that that's that's just something that that i i, I it, it's so exciting man because all i can think about what about our community what about our kids what about our families that nobody even had a clue you know and so that's that's that 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 right there was just so fulfill me if i fulfilled a dream that that kids can achieve anything that they want to. You understand? Just with a little love and a little, little togetherness and and understand and believe. See, being able to mentor to kids, the power of mentoring is something crazy. People don't you understand? understand it. And that's what gets you to do things like that, you know, to take a, a, a community team and beat a city. <laughs> so that's what it was. See, I'll never forget. I remember when uh, a coach, it was one of the parents, said, oh, y'all coming up here so we can show you how real football is played. Mm. <laughs> I remember that. You know what I'm saying? We're going by your alma mater. Uh -huh. And you turn this into a national brand. Mm -hmm. National. Yep. Yeah, you got guys in the, you got guys in the league, guys at Division One schools, guys at D2, D3, giving guys a chance. What about which player? Because you've coached Ugh. some guys, but which player? And I, I, I think I want to stop here and just like, what does that mean? You see Ted <laughs> Ginn Senior Avenue. Like, what does that mean when you see that? Before we even get to the next question, There's somebody's opinion. You, you know, trying to honor me for for the work I've done in the community, in the city, and children. 
you know. That, I, for me, it don't mean nothing. Well, I know. I mean, you're you're you're, you're, you're very you know, you're, just like we we interviewed Coach Laverde at Kirtland last week. Uh -huh. You're the same way. You're so unassuming. Like you know, you don't walk around like like you own the place. I think that's one of the best things about you. Um, so let me ask this question: What player is your best success story? Man, <laughs> which one you want me to say? They all of them. I, I know. I, I but I had to ask the oh question because I think coaching is all about relationships and success stories and everybody's got one where they're just like yeah yeah you I got I got so many but if you just want me to say one for for the show for the show <laughs> yes for the show I think Cardell Jones is one of the best ones why what make what make what makes because Card without without Glenville High School football get academy you wouldn't have knew him you know, I just think that that his life and what he was going through at the time, uh, you know, we, you know, he just he just would have never clicked. JT Barrett goes down. That's right. Cardell goes in. What are you thinking? Oh, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told Urban was scared to death. <laughs> he called me. I said, "Man, come on, it's time to roll now, nah, Herb." You know what I'm saying? Oh, I was never. I was never panicked. I didn't panic. I said, it's finna be a show. What did he say to you leading up to that Wisconsin game? Because, I mean, you were oh, right. You were right. It was the show. Yeah. Oh, but what did, what did Irvin he... was nervous. Irvin was so bland with Cardell in the, <laughs> in the Wisconsin game. I said, Irvin, please. He's not going to run all that crazy stuff you're talking about. He's going to check out of it. Let him throw the ball. <laughs> Man, you know what was Cardell saying? Like I, I, I know he called you before to get. Oh, yeah, what, what was he? What was he saying? Nothing. He go his time to roll. He that smart and that good. You oh, know what I'm saying? So he he goes on has this phenomenal game. I'm going crazy. Yeah, I, and I know well, you got to think. Of, you got to think about the, the next game. The next game he was really scared. What? Urban was. The, the, what is saving? I, I, you yeah. know you you know all these guys. I yeah. mean you, you're connected with all of them. What did Saban say to you after that game was over? I didn't talk to Saban. You didn't talk to Saban? No. But I, I was on Urban, though. So, what, what, Urban, you got to turn him loose. I mean, you got to turn him go loose. In, you can't go in Alabama with that. You understand? Know Alabama going to stop the run, but they can't stop the pass. Oh, he, you know what I'm saying? He was, he he was phenomenal. Up. You know what I'm saying? But how, and, not to cut you off, how did that make you feel watching a kid? We, we know he's extremely talented. But you, like you said, there are people who just didn't believe in him. People gave up on him. What did, how did that make you feel watching him uh, smash, smash Wisconsin, upset Alabama, and then he's hoisting the trial? You're there. I know you're there. Yeah, I'm there all what, three weeks. What are you thinking? Man, I'm, I'm cool. See, this this is what nobody really understood, even even Urban. I said, Urban, this – be cool. Leave him alone. You know, <laughs> I was, I was, I wasn't nervous at all. You understand? Because I know Cardell. He's a, he's a killer. You know what I'm saying? And he's smart. And let's see, a lot of people, when, you know, when that, when that whole thing came through, we play, we, we don't play school. The first thing they're thinking, he's an unintelligent kid, no, but you know better. He's smart as a whip. You know, and that's just being young, whatever that was, it wasn't no big deal, you know. Just a kid, you right? Know, so, you know, I, I, he's, he's he, like I've had but, minimal interaction with him. He's a, a he's a very humble guy too. Yeah. Like he'll smile, take pictures with people, yeah. do oh, yeah. do, 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 he, do all know, those things. This is probably his biggest problem today. What's his biggest problem? He never was able to be a kid. Oh, and, and and he even he how old he is today? He loves children. Never, able, but never been able to be a kid. Just never been able just yeah, to live. Yeah, just had to try to live until we got some structure around it. What, what is, so, I, I guess, what is that like? Like, you know, having all these high profile coaches and kids, that that, 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 that doesn't do anything to you. But what, what does that do to these kids? How hard is that? Like you, I mean, I, I've seen it before. Every yeah. coach in the country running through the school. Yeah, they've been there today. No, I, 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 trust me. You know I, I'm, 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 I'm sure they have. Well, I, I think it's all part of your teaching. You got to teach the kids to be humble. You got to teach the kids to stay patient and poised. You, 
got to teach them how to be professionals, you know, in high school. Uh, you know, because, you know, they're still young. Some of them make it go to their heads and some of them, you know, it won't. But, you know, you have to continue to embrace them with understanding so that they don't blow their, their uh, opportunities. Because, you know, any kid can get arrogant over, over some, anything. Yeah, so, you know, you that's all part of your teaching, man. What? Like, and this, I guess, I'm going I'm to leave with this. What is something that a lot of people don't know about you that'd be like an interesting fact? Like, for me, it's like you are literally a clone of your father. <laughs> like, I saw a picture of your dad. I thought it was you. Yeah, because that's my dad. Like, and that's something that I, I wish I had a picture I could show it to you. I right. couldn't find one. But what is something that, that people don't know about you? Like, an interesting fact about you that people don't know? I'm probably the most forgivingest dude in the world <laughs> and less arrogant than people might think. I, I don't think I'm no better than nobody else. Uh, you know, a lot of things. And I know I get a bad rap sometimes in people's opinion. But, you know, this is what I really do in my life, you know. And that's what's so hard for me. Probably when it comes down to coaching and, and, and school, you get people that think that I don't know and they think it's about winning football games and it's think about that's their opinion, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and I think that they think that that this is something that I try to like I'm putting a a mark on the wall that I've accomplished this coming and I don't even know half of the stuff I do. <laughs> you know, I don't even think it, I don't even register. You know, you probably can tell me some things about myself that I don't forgot I even, even thought about. You know. But I think the thing that people really don't understand, even people that work at for me, whether it's football, whether it's working in the school, this is what I really do for a living. This is my life. Well, it's not everybody else's. You know what I'm saying? So when when things don't go the way I think they should go, you know, people get offended by it sometimes. But everybody else can got a choice. They can do it or not do it. Right. I can't. You know what I'm saying? And that's real. This occupation that I have, who has it? No who do you know have it? Very few <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. But this is how I live. You know, and I've had people that tell me, oh, he ain't the only one to do that. We, I do that. I do this. No, they don't. Some people, you know, you, 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 you what, what you teach? I teach English. Okay. You're an English teacher. You can, you can move, go anywhere you want. You know, that's your life. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm football and, and, and track and, and having a school is my life. I don't have a choice. You know what I'm saying? So people look at you and say, man, I ain't how they go. I ain't mean nothing, man. I can move on. Everybody can leave, but I ain't got king. Right, you can. You know, you, you know, you, you've, got, <laughs> you've, got, you've got a greater mission. That's right. Um, Which takes me to this question. Um, I always ask, I have to ask a couple of the same questions. What was the hardest moment of your coaching career? Um, you know, the coach from Kirtland had mentioned that one of his players had uh, fell in the pool and broke his neck and was paralyzed. And unfortunately, coaching has a lot of great stories, a lot of great things that happen with it, but also has its really downsides. What was the lowest point, the hardest situation you ever had to deal with in your career, you know, outside the cancer? I think I think the the toughest thing to deal with, like a specific situation that occurred. Oh my God, man! You know, I, 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 like I said, because I, go ahead, I, I'm, go ahead, my bad. I know you want, you want to have a certain situation, but every situation is certain. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> every situation is certain. You know what I'm saying? For me, you know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't. You know, every, I mean, if a kid just didn't get a C in the classroom that could have got him in college and he got a D right. and, and and maybe that educator really didn't see why, the, why he deserved to see and he had 59.9% right. or whatever, you know, or 60%, he should have had to get a C or whatever. And I find that kid on the street because I never got him off of it. 
They got, you, you see what I'm saying? Right. You, get, you know, you, you got you get, you know that's like that's that's important. You got to get these kids off the street and doing yeah. something productive. Like one that one that crushed me because I had him in class was Anthony Gordon. No, you right. That, see that, that that's what I'm saying. That yeah. that one that one right there I, when I, when, I, when he uh, when he yeah. died, man. That that yeah, that, good that, kid. Yo, oh my God, a great kid. Yeah, I smile all the time. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So so, you know that I I used the one about the grade. That, that goes that never got off the street that I lose it. You know what I'm right. saying? Where somebody else is looking at what's here. I got to stay to my standard. You right. know, I don't care what you say. One tenth of a point, I, I'm not going to do it. He didn't earn it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's devastating for me. But what also is devastating when you, like you talk about Anthony Gordon. But I look at it, as a matter of fact, it's just funny that you said it. I was looking at a film. Yesterday, no, Sunday, I have, I was with coaches and I was telling them about Davon Anderson. Oh, wow. You understand? Oh, that dude was so fast. You understand? But, we, you know, I was talking about, you know who he was. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, but I was talking about him, but then I, I started talking about when I look at the film against Glenville and, 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 and Heights, I looked at it and I had three kids that's in the ground dead off that team and that and that's 2013 yeah that's one of them is my nephew that's devastating you know what i'm saying because uh, christian spencer died of cancer that's right he was like and number 19. 30 yeah 34 and and 19 oh was, that's was, right he did pass away too. both of them was shot i think his friend killed him was that was that the guy that he got shot? And he ended up dying on somebody's porch. No, he was in the car and his friend in the back seat shot him. I, he stayed I, at the house. I, I guess that's what we. Well, I guess we're just based on that. Talk about that. Just the need for just the, the curb the violence and just because yeah. it, it's taking too many lives. Well, well, see, good lives too. The reason why we have so much violence, so much dysfunction, it goes back to the core values back to certain entities because the home and the tree is broke you know and we keep blaming the children for who they are because they're not properly raised right so we have to re-identify education you know what i'm saying we got to do something different with it you know we have to be the table we have to be the educator the parent the everything that nobody's willing to do so in so and the result, we get everything that we're talking about. And violence, death, lack of understanding, all that kind of stuff, man. You talk about that a lot, lack of understanding. Yeah, um, because the kid's not exposed to anything, so they don't understand that. It, it just bothers me, you know, when, you know, you just, because you want to give kids an opportunity. And I, I guess I, was, I, was gonna, I want to kind of finish with this one. Um told me this and I've talked to my kids about that believe it or not there's a lot of stuff that I do in my class that's very similar to what you do mm -hmm. um but that's what you supposed to no listen I, like I said before I, I'm a good thief oh, yeah. I, I'll steal whatever well, whatever, 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 whatever is beneficial man. you said this and I said this to my kids I said you know how do you educate the unwilling <laughs> that's what I'm telling you you said that I mean that's yeah. football that, that, that's, that's life right. in general so that goes back to that, that you have to be spe a specialist in today's time you talking about people that's unwilling to learn because nobody taught them to learn. <laughs> so, you know, people don't want to do that. People want to blame them. But once you understand and diagnose who you are dealing with and, and take a, a, a look around in the world, then you know how to get them what they need to survive. So you always talk about favoritism. Favor, everybody's favoritism for everybody. Right. You know, and it's favoritism for this reason. Every person is different. Every person needs a, a different medication. So it's favoritism. Everybody to needs them. a different medication. You can't I can't give somebody yo what you need as medication, you can't give it to nigga because you're gonna get a reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, look, 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 you, hey, you, you killed me with that one. So, as, as, as we're finishing this up, this this has been phenomenal because people just need to understand this coaching game is, 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 
it's it's treacherous and you always say football gets in the way of things no um you got another former player getting ready to uh try and play for a lombardi trophy that's right tell us a little bit about uh frank clark frank clark Oh, Frank Clark. <laughs> well, once again, it's a, it was based on how you developed him. I remember when his dad brought him to me and said, you know, this is where he needs to be. Frank Clark wanted to do everything but play defensively. <laughs> Frank Clark wanted to play quarterback, wanted to play tight Quarterback? <laughs> you want to play receiver, you want to play running back, so you're defensively. So his junior year, how much did Frank Clark play? He didn't play much because he Frank Clark would want to do it his way. Right. So I got to spend more time trying to discipline him and to do what you tell him. That's part of being a, a, a behavior analyst. So he can't play football like he won't. So you got to keep him here so long as you know you got his daddy on his side. And then when he became a senior, you understand? I said, Frank Clark, this is what you're going to play. He was there. No, I want to play. I said, that's all you're going to play or you're not going to play. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I'm telling you about we can see more in kids than kids see in themselves. Got to, you better and be then you to have them. to stay patient and poised with them to seize the opportunity for success. You know what I'm saying? So Frank Clark is a perfect example of that. You know? And 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 now look at him. He won the highest paid athletes in NFL. But think about it, he lost his daddy. You know, he got all that kind of stuff, man. So that's when I get back to being scary again. Cause what if I weren't here? Right. Is is there a Frank Clark? Yeah. If there's not, it's, a, if there's not a Ted Ginn man, to no put him Frank in a situation Clark. to be successful. Right. No, that, 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 that's legit. That's 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 but, legit. But you understand like, what I'm saying? Right. You know, all these different things, and it's a lot of work, and people sit back and have opinions about a lot of things, um, Hicks. And, and it's, it really... It's really bad because we can't, at today's time, we really can't make mistakes, man. You know, as leaders, you're a leader, man. That's deep. You know what I'm saying? So, let me ask you this. How does that make you feel, knowing that you've got kids' lives in your hand, and if you can't you can't make mistakes, or you could alter the trajectory of a timeline? Because now Frank has generational wealth. Forever. Forever. And, and you've helped to mold that trajectory. How is that for you? Knowing that you you've got situation where you could where you make a mistake and their oh. trajectory could go just the yeah, other way. Well, let me explain this to you since you asked me that question. Let me tell you something, man. I talk, tell people all the time. You understand? I said being a leader of children and educator, being an educator, being a head football coach, all these different things. You are not dealing with a piece of iron. You're dealing with somebody's child. Right. You understand? These people are in your hands, just like you are the head for you the uh, uh, coach in, in your classroom. You are somebody entrusting you to do right by their kid. You understand? Know it's saying? a heavy trust. You understand? Know so let me explain to you. You got kids. I do. You know what I'm saying? You got to trust somebody, man. You Who do. are you trusting? You understand what I'm saying? This is a cold, cold game right here, but it's God's game. See, that's what people don't understand. This is how I look at it. Let's use armed services as, as the example. If you got a platoon, right? Mm -hmm. We everybody's head of a platoon. We go on the war every day. You understand? Know and you head of the platoon. So what happens is the pe the the people that is trusting you to give them the right direction. Now, say for instance. We go to war, you the head of the platoon, and we go to war, you tell your platoon, say, I want y'all to go down here and make a right right here, and that's what it's gonna be. And, and you we're in good shape, right? You go down there and make a right, and the whole platoon get blowed up. Yep. You understand? You the only one left. You the one that got to face those families and go back and shake the hand and say, I'm sorry, but he didn't make it. And that's your, and that's your, the, your that's what, your burden that you take That's as a right. coach. I'm sorry. Ain't no, nobody else got that. I'm sorry he didn't make it. When people come to get an academy and they fail, they flunk out or something happened to them, that's on me. That ain't on nobody else there. No matter if they don't want to listen to me or not. 
put my name on that. And then I hired people to run certain platoons. And then you, well then I got, then you come in, I said, what happened to them? Well, I told them to go right and they went left. I told them to go, they should have went left and I told them to go right and they, they stepped on the line, man. Let me ask you this, because this has been, I mean, as always, I mean, you're, you're a very deep human being. You've got your own school. Very few people can say that. When you're dead and in the ground, what is it you want people to say about Ted Ginn Sr.? That he tried to help somebody and try to put people in position. And he did it from his heart and for real. Not, not no fake, not for money, not for fame, not for nothing. I was in a position that I could really help people and raise children with some, and, and then based on a lot of the things of where I came from and things that didn't happen for me, and I had an opportunity and I did it. That's deep, you know. As always, I appreciate you. I love you, man. You like like second pops to yeah, me. Yeah, love you too, um, man. So I appreciate you, man. Um, you know, appreciate you. Can't say how much hey, I appreciate you. Hey, man, I appreciate you even spending the time with me. As I need it. I'm an old man. You know that, don't you? <laughs> I'm a senior citizen. Don't forget that. <laughs> you don't be laughing at me. I ain't going to laugh at you. My man. Right. Love you, boy. Love you too. All right. Oh, nine.